everyone, Video Game Lover here, and welcome to my first edition of me doing these um, vlog videos to honor my five year anniversary of being on YouTube. Now, I'm not sure why, because if you're new to my channel, you were probably surprised I mentioned I've been here on five years, and that's because, well, as I mentioned this in the past, my old account was terminated back in around February. Um, but I'm going to take this time, we go through memory lane for a lot of my long time subs and some new subs just to give you an idea where I come from. So, back in 2011, I used to be in Super Soundwave 100. I was in the commentary community and it was awful. I mean, they made some stupid rules on how you do commentary videos. I had nagging ass people telling me I've been doing a poor job on commentaries, yet they did just as worse as my commentaries were and it was just cancer absolutely toxic i left the community in 2013 never looked back awful community so i decided to join the retro community but what's hilarious was i was not planning to do any videos so in 2013 around i will say july i created my channel video game lawyer 58 and what want, I want to talk about how, why I chose that name because when I get into arguments with people on Twitter, and this is mainly towards sports and things like that, the first thing that everyone would catch their eye on me, catch an eye on me, is my name, Video Game Lover 58. Some people will think I'm 58 years old, but it's really just a number. A lot of people think I'm a basement dweller, I'm just a guy that plays video games 24 7. You know, that is the first thing that a lot of my haters like to do, is they tend to attack my name. They don't pay attention to my arguments, they don't pay attention to anything but my name. They always call me, you're a basement dweller. The reason I came up with Video Game Warrior 58 is simple. I like video games, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not rocket science. I'm a gamer, I've been gaming for nearly... 20 years. I've been gaming for around since 1997 to 98. I've been gaming for around 20 years. I love video games. You know what I mean? So, and the 58 was just a random number. I like, you know what? Not many people call them 58. So, eh, 58. There you go. Video game lover, 58. Not hard to figure out, haters. I'm just saying. But I came up with my name. And I was planning on doing maybe just a few little projects and things like that. Well, that all changed when a certain YouTube user attacked me in 2013. And a lot of people who follow me for a while, you probably remember who I'm talking about. And it's Blackie Lebowski, or who he used to been before he changed his name, Ash Villian. This guy was a massive Nintendo fanboy. And he used to bash people for liking Sony, bash people for liking Microsoft, just overpraise Nintendo franchises to no end. He was a mentally unstable man to the point that he actually, at one point, got so mad at someone for making fun of him for liking Mario that he pulled out guns on camera. I'm not making this up. You search his name, you'll find the video of him pulling up a shotgun and threatening to kill people. I made a video a video towards him because he was attacking me saying that I don't do videos and he would love for me to destroy him or you know you can't destroy me you're just a nobody. So I did the video on Blackie Lebowski and it got a lot of views. It got 600 views. A lot of that was because Black Bond retweeted me because he and him were going at it but you know, I call him out on the bullshit. Because Blackie Lebowski was a complete jerk. An absolute... Ugh. Annoying. So that's what really kicked my channel into gear. And for throughout most of 2013, I stayed away from the drama. I just stick to retro gaming. I did pickup videos. I done videos like favorite Wii games. Favorite uh, GameCube games. Um, Super Nintendo games and things like that and that's mainly what I sticked with in 2014 sometimes I'll make 
a video on Nintendo Fanboys, but that was really it. In 2014, I was specifically doing retro gaming videos. And I would get some subs. I would get like 50 subs, 60 subs. You know, it was pretty good. In late 2014, I decided to add more fire to the f add more fuel to the fire. Um, because if there's one thing I did like doing back in the day in 2014 was I used to piss off some Nintendo fanboys who non-stop defend the Wii U. And that's kind of what I like to do with other fanboys on YouTube. I just like doing that because it's just me. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just me. <laughs> you know, um, and I used to do this series called Bad News Lover 58, and what I would do is wear sunglasses and act like Bad News Barrett from WWE, because I was a big fan of Bad News Barrett. When Wade Barrett became Bad News Barrett, that was actually when he got over by the fans. His gimmick blew up, but sadly, WWE, nope, 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 nope. had to F it up. But I decided just to have a little bit of fun with that little gimmick. And, you know, it was fun. But for most of 2014, I sticked on just retro gaming. And that's really it. So we get to 2015. And I think this is the year a lot of people will remember. Because 2015 was probably, rival to 2016, my most chaotic year. And the reason for that was two reasons. One was I did a video on Crack Gamer reviews when he was exposed of stealing people's gameplay. If you don't know who Crack Gamer is, I explained him many times. He's one of the worst Xbox fanboys on YouTube. And he's actually one of the reasons why the Xbox One is in the shape that it is. But Crack Gamer was exposed of stealing people's gameplay footage. And he was reviewing games that he doesn't even own. Or doesn't even play. And he will give them a bad review because it's Sony. You know what I'm saying? I called him out. And I got a lot of views from that. I was actually genuinely surprised on how many views I got from that video. It was my most viewed video I've ever done in my entire YouTube career. Like, if I remember, before my account was terminated, I ended up reaching... That video got 7,000 viewers. It was unbelievable. It was crazy on how many people liked the video. And also call out people that actually liked Crack Gamers videos. So I'm very happy a lot of people have my back. A lot of, even my, some of my retro subscribers really enjoyed that video. Because it was coming from here, from the heart. You know what I'm saying? So that was really good. For most of March, April... I focus on just retro gaming. That all changed in May. And what motivated me into doing this series was simply 2015 was the year Nintendo fanboys were getting extremely out of control with defending the Wii U. And this was right around the time Nintendo had one of their worst E3s since 2008. I came up with... Nintendo Fanboy Destruction Month. And what I was doing was, I was Godzilla 2000. Which I have, um... Do I have him here? Nah, he's in the other shelf. Sorry, my bad. Godzilla 2000. Um, and I would pick four to five videos that I find out was ridiculous. And I would just immediately destroy their points and beyond lies that they had. For example, the first episode was me picking up a lot of comments. People just say, there was one comment someone said that the Wii U was going to last like 7 to 10 years. You had some guy saying that the Wii U was going to outsell the PS4. You had someone saying Bayonetta 2 is the greatest action game ever. It shits on God of War. I will never forget Pay Enthusiast comment where he said that Wii games and shovelware Wii games are better than God of War 3. <laughs> it was hilarious. Episode 2 will focus on ABGN's Earthworm Jim. Now, look, listen, I don't have any problems with ABGN. I always like them. I love James Rolfe, especially when he talks about movies. But when it comes to video games, sometimes 
<laughs> Some of his points make no damn sense. That Earthworm Jim video really annoyed me because they were like saying that the Genesis was nowhere near as close as the Super Nintendo. And they were saying that the Genesis strong point was it had better sports games. I was like, are you, are you joking? Sports games. Really. That was a fail. Episode 3 was on Player Essence and the whole and his whole website of damage control. And episode 4 was the gamers at large how they were so mad at Capcom for not bringing the Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil Remake remasters to the Wii U despite they had Resident Evil Remake and Zero exclusive to the GameCube and the Wii for two generations. So... And then the last episode, it was on 3 kilobytes, and that was really about it. But what was hilarious was, it actually ended up, a lot of people really liked those videos. And I got a kick of doing them, but it ultimately led me to a bad direction. Because I ended up doing Season 2. Now, I did Season 2 because my Season 1 kind of polluted my channel of toxicity. My channel kind of got toxic from doing that first season. So, season two was in a secondary account. And what's funny about season two was it didn't get as much views as season one did, but it pissed off so many people. Let me explain. I did one on Yo Chaos and the Hate Pit Podcast. And the reason I did that was they were damage controlling Beyond Belief from Nintendo's E3, claiming that Nintendo won E3. Sony didn't show nothing in E3, and it was a complete lie. And when I did that video, no joke, the minute I did the video, Yo Chaos disabled his ratings and his comment section. Yes, he was afraid of me. And now leads me to the controversial aspect. If you guys don't know, me and 8-Bit Eric had a beef in 2015. And a lot of it was due to because of Metroid Prime Federation Force. Back when they, Nintendo revealed Metroid Prime Federation Force, he was like upset that people were going to boycott the game. And claimed that, you know, there was a Metroid spinball game and no one got mad. I ended up bringing up points to his entire video. I was like saying, well, where do I begin with this video? For one thing, people have been waiting for eight years for an actual Metroid game that isn't Other M. And the reason why Spinball, Metroid Pinball, didn't get flack was because it came out when Metroid Prime 2 came out. So your points didn't make a whole lot of sense. And Ava Eric ended up attacking me. We ended up going back and forth. He ended up start going to my comment sections and started to make fun of me. I'm not making this up. Some of my old subs may remember that. So, just as a joke, I included him in the Title Family Instruction Month for only two seconds. He ended up flagging down my video. And some people actually told me that when that happened, they actually lost respect to Ava Eric. Now, I know a lot of people are going to think that I'm lying about this. I'll tell you this right now. I'm going to try to find the link of him flagging me. Just to make sure we're clear that I'm not lying. I'm not saying there's people that aren't going to believe me. But you know how it is. Some people may not believe it. And they're going to claim I'm a liar. So, I'm, I'm just saying. Like I said, I don't have any beefs with Ava Eric anymore. But if he's still mad at me over this... What can I do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what can I do? It is what it is. And I, and what's hilarious was when I called him out about it, I got hate for that. Everyone was attacking me. Everyone was insulting my autism. A lot of people were making fun of me. It was hilarious. I wasn't mad at it. In fact, I was <laughs> laughed about it because I was like, wow, people legit hate me. And that's the thing a lot of people kind of fail to realize is... I used to have been very, very hated in the retro community. And the reason was, I wasn't the happy-go-lucky, amazing video like always. Like, sometimes I would say, you know, Retro Liberty, I'm very cool with the man. I'm cool with it. But back in 2015, I still was, you know, okay with him. And I saw another still that I thought of the NES Pursuit. 
it was okay. I was like, hey, you know what? That was a good episode. It was okay. People actually ended up attacking me saying, what? You thought the episode was bad? I was like, no, I just said that it was okay. I didn't say it was bad, guys. I just said it was meh. It was okay. And people got upset with that. So, from late, most of 2015, I stayed away from the bullshit. I stayed away from the drama. That will that all change in 2016, and 2016 was probably my most darkest year in my channel. That was when I got into a lot of drama. First was that certain Nintendo fanboy, I don't want to name because he might still be lurking on YouTube and try to flag me down. Um, Obi One plays. I made that funny little parody video on Obi One. His fans got so mad that they actually terminated my channel. I was able to get it back. Thankfully, but Obi One actually tried to delete my channel, um, and I went on this drama with this Nintendo family for five months. And what's hilarious was he was the one that started it. He tries to turn, he tries to play the victim card, saying that I caused it, but he did. I was just, I was in a screw attack video calling someone out because I forgot what video was it that I thought screw attack did that was stupid. This dude ended up attacking me out of nowhere, so then I retaliated. And then he ended up calling me a fake Nintendo fan, you don't play games, Make I made a video exposing him. And then he starts, and then that's how the drama began. But then was the probably the most worst drama, and that was between me and Resurrection. Now, listen, I'm not trying, again, not starting anything Resurrection, I'm just, this is just... Memory, you know what I'm saying? But me and Resurrection legit had a beef. Me, him, better gamer. Oh my god, that that those were some dark times. We it was it was just a mess. Whenever I would do retro gaming videos, I would end up still getting dislikes up the ass. It, it was a nightmare. So 2017. And by the way, if I would mention 2016 was the year I started doing uh, live streams. 2017 was a year. I wanted to detox my channel. I wanted to try the best I can to stay away from drama. So, because I was getting legit burned out from YouTube. I wasn't going anywhere on YouTube. So I decided, you know, let me try to continue MN12Bird's legacy. Because MN12Bird, who was one of my favorite YouTube users, he's sadly not really on YouTube anymore was the reason why I was motivated to doing videos in the first place, mainly in particular retro gaming. And I decided, you know what, let me try to do videos into his style. And when I was doing that, I started to get a resurgence. I started to get lots of people commenting, lots of people really liking my videos. And it was crazy, a lot of people were really loving my reviews. And that's when I started to just do reviews. And I also did live streams, you know. That's probably the bulk of my views have been on live streams. Sometimes I talk about what's going on in video game news. Sometimes I talk about what happened on YouTube. I mean, sometimes I may talk about drama, but it's not often. Um, and that's what I've been doing, 2017. And my channel was on a massive resurgence. As we all know, I almost reached 500 subs, and now we go to 2018, my channel was falsely terminated. Again, a big mystery. It's been four to five months, and I never knew who was the one that false flagged me. And the sad thing was, I don't know why they flagged me. I don't know, was it, was it someone that pissed off in the past? Was it someone that, you know, just file hates me? So, I was legit depressed. I was like, damn. 480 subs gone. So I made my new channel. Told everyone I'm back. Now we're back at 175 subs. I'm so happy. This rebuild is going very well. And I'm going to be honest. Not trying to brag it. I wouldn't be surprised my sub count goes through the roof in Southeast Game Exchange. <laughs> because let's be real here. I'm probably going to be featured in a lot of videos. Which I don't mind. Um, but for most of 2018. I've been focusing on the same thing. Reviews live streams, and once in a while, clown Nintendo families, because that's just me, you know. I did the video on HeBot, and recently I'm going out with Harmon Smith, because that dude's the biggest low cow I've ever encountered, but that is my channel for five years. Um, it's been an adventure. It really has been an adventure, 
and I'm very thankful for all my subs who've been stick to me for all these years because if it wasn't for you guys I wouldn't be doing these videos you know what I'm saying so I really appreciate this a lot I thank everyone for subbing to me and I hope you guys really enjoyed this little vlog uh, I do plan on doing another one of my adventure of anime because it's been five years I've actually been really into anime so Thank you guys for enjoying this video. I'll see you guys later tonight. I got my PS2 collection video planning for later tonight. See you guys later. Peace.